Well, with all the fad diets and conflicting health advice, it's no wonder that we're all so confused about food. Joining us in the Harvey Norman Lounge to simplify it all for us, internationally acclaimed health expert, Dr. Livy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Yes. Thank you. It is always such a pleasure to have you in the studio with us. Love um, joining you. Thank you. And you've got such a big following. I mean, how has food become so complicated? I think there are so many conflicting voices out there right now. So there are people with such great intentions and they'll often share what's worked for them, assuming that it's going to work for everyone and it's not the case. We have our own individual DNA. Mm. We have lots of different bugs living in our inside of our gut microbiome, inside our tummy, and all those things impact what foods actually serve us. So unfortunately, there's no hard and fast answer to what works for everyone. And uh, that's why I want to debunk all of the myths that are out there because it doesn't need to be confusing. Good. How do we? weed out the good from the bad? So the first thing is to pay attention to how your body responds to what you eat. Your body doesn't have a voice. It will give you symptoms to let you know whether it's happy or not with its choices. That might be body fat that sticks to you that you don't understand. It might be reflux. If you get reflux from something, your body's not saying, yes, so happy you just consumed that. Mm. It's trying to regurgitate it and bring it back up. I think another point to make is that we use language around food that's not that accurate. We'll say, this is low-fat cheese is healthy, and then you'll read something else that says, low-fat cheese isn't healthy, mm. kale's healthy. Mm. But food isn't healthy. People are or they aren't. Food is nutritious or it isn't. And the more nutritious food we eat, the healthier we will be. So a great question to ask to weed out the confusing information is, will this nourish me? Will this nourish me? That's a really good one. Mm. What do you think some of the food traps are that we fall into? Uh, <laughs> I think people get really confused about whether to have high fat, low fat. Mm. We've seen lots of changes. If, if you've been around long enough, you will notice that nutrition information moves in about 30 year cycles. So it, people also <laughs> want to label how they eat. You don't necessarily have to label it. You just need to pay attention to what actually gives you energy. Think about what life's like when you wake up in the morning. Have you got great energy? If not, there's maybe some food, drinks, sleeping things that need to be tweaked. So start to notice how you feel each day. Well, Everyone's the, got those tweaks. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. really good advice because I guess we can trip through life without stopping and not thinking about it. So many people write things off to age. They'll think that, oh, this is just happening now because I'm getting older. And it's not necessarily mm. the case because, for example, people are reporting that they feel more stressed today. And when we're stressed, we tend to not eat as well. So there are, there are consequences to that. So I want this information to help people not necessarily do those things on a regular mm. basis. OK, I've got mm. one for you. What, what are three foods that you wish people would eat more of? <laughs> uh, vegetables, vegetables, Don't vegetables. Okay. No. <laughs> but, uh, it's true that we're supposed to have a five servings of veg vegetables a day minimum just to f just for average health. That's not for amazing health. Mm. And less than 10% of adult Kiwis get that. So veggies. Wow. But even just think about parsley. No matter how big your backyard is or balcony, you can plant that, add it to everything. Mm. If you make a bolognese, pack it with seven different vegetables so yeah. that it's not just mostly meat. I also love fat from whole real food because it really helps to regulate our Satiety, the satiety centre in our brain. We eat less when we have more fat. So avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut, all the good fats. Organic. Butter, you know, I had I had cauliflower in my smoothie this morning. Did you? Yeah. That Frozen is... cauliflower. It was delicious. So full of goodness. I know. Your liver really would good. have loved that. I felt so mm. wholesome as I was drinking it. <laughs> so, what do you think we can do to help change our relationship with food? Uh, answer the question food is because for so many people when it's a struggle for them it's delicious it's yummy whereas if you say it to an athlete food is fuel someone like me will say food is nourishment mm. so it's fine for food to be yummy and delicious but if it's the only way you get those uplifting kind of feelings then you'll turn to it and not necessarily make nutritious choices so find other ways that you can connect to those those feelings that you're looking to feel geez i could listen to you for hours um, but you got some seminars coming up uh, we'll talk more about that in just a minute but when you're at the cinema sem cinemas seminars, uh, seminars <laughs> well, what's the number one question people ask you it's why I've written this book, What Am I Supposed to Eat? Because right. I talk about women's hormones, I talk about stress and their impact on all sorts of things, digestive system, liver function, and still everyone says at the end, what am I supposed to eat? <laughs> so that's why I've actually written this book. It's the most common question I'm asked. It's a really <laughs> easy read to dip into. I'm just looking for the women's hormones section. So who, who do you hope is going to get something out of this? Uh, the short answer is everyone, whether it's uh, an 18 year old male going off to university saying, OK, well, what am I supposed yeah. to eat? Um, busy working families, people of all ages. I want it to be a reference book. It will stand it will stand uh, the task of time. So what is in there, the information 
is the mm. way I've been teaching people for more than, than more than 20 years. And, I've been and there working. are worksheets and things. It's not a recipe book, we should say that, no. oh, but it's so packed full of good information. OK, I've got a question for you, Dr Libby. A lot of people, I guess, and you hear politicians bang on about this a lot too, I guess they talk about the cost. You know, can you apply your philosophies cost effectively? Very much so. So buy in bulk, for example, So and freeze things. For example, on a Sunday, you might make a great big soup or stew or casserole. Uh, you've bought all those ingredients in bulk. You can freeze that. Freezing doesn't destroy those nutrients. So then you've got a couple of dinners for the week ahead. That can make a, that can make mm. a really big difference. Buy seasonally, buy directly from farmers so that they get paid for what they've grown for us to have great health. That can make it cheaper as well. So Brilliant. And prepare, 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 and actually use what you prepare. I need to get more of your books, I think. <laughs> 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 it's been a pleasure speaking with you, Dr Libby. Always is. Now, Dr Libby is speaking um, at centres up and down the country over the next six weeks, so you can check out her website for your chance to hear her in person. It's very much worthwhile as well. And we have two copies of What Am I Supposed to Eat to give away. You can go to our Facebook page to enter the draw. Thank you so much for It's a pleasure. On. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Dr Libby. I guess I can't enter that competition. <laughs> OK. <laughs>